So the 3-3 homework expands upon some of the rules of logarithms. Now I'm going to do like a quick little tutorial of what those rules are. Okay, There are pretty much just, eh, I'd say, three main rules you want to remember. I'm going to write those rules over here to the side. The first rule is that if you have, in any kind of logarithm, it doesn't have to be a natural log, it can be any kind of log, if you have two things multiplied together inside the logarithm, you can expand it to be the natural log of the first plus the natural log of the second. That's your first rule. So you might want to write those down. The next rule is that if we have two things that are divided, we can top minus the log at the bottom. Now, I wrote natural log. This rule applies. You just, that rule is, is if you have some power on something inside because logarithm or of powers, we can drop that by the thing that's inside. Are the rules that we are going to talk about. This one basically comes from the fact that add the exponents. This kind of comes from the fact that if the bases are like we're dividing, we uh, comes from the fact that if we have a power to a power, we multiply. And so what is the answer to a logarithm? It's a power. So this is a power to a power. So basically that's where those three rules come from. So those are the three rules you're going to need to uh, complete this lesson. We are going to use these rules. So if you could just take a second and write those rules down for me. That would be very helpful as we go through the problem. Uh, so if you haven't written them down, write them down right now. Um, I don't know. Uh, I see the, the purple writing. That yeah, okay, I can see what you're doing. Oh, awesome, okay. So, write these three rules down. I'm going to just start with number one. Um, okay, so let's take a look at problem number one. Problem number one says... To express each logarithm in terms of the natural log of 2 and the natural log of 5. What you first want to do is take whatever is inside and ex rewrite it with 2's and 5's to start with. So, if we look at 4, the number 4 is 2 squared. So that's 2 squared over 5. So first I'm just breaking it down. So like for number 3, the number 80. What is that? Well, that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. So that I only see multiples of the natural log of 2 and the natural log of 5. Well, the first rule I'm going to use is a division can be split up as the log of the top minus the log of the bottom. Okay, so that's the first step. Now, 2 squared is not the same. 2 squared is not 2. So the way that we can do that is we can use this rule right here. says that we can drop the power down in front. So let's take this power and drop it down in front. So our final answer is 2 natural log of 2 minus the natural log of 5. Okay. Now, hopefully that's going to get you started. Uh, 5, my suggestion is divide by 2. That's going to be 4 tenths. Rewrite what 4 tenths is as a fraction. Um, let's look at number 7. 2,000 is 2 times 1,000. <laughs> and if we keep doing that, let me write it down. I'm going to break it down a little bit more here. Um, if we keep breaking it down, we get 2 to the 3rd times 5 to the 3rd. Okay? And if you did on a calculator, 2 to the 3rd times 5 to the 3rd, you would get the number 
Oh, I'm skipping a 2. It would actually be 2 to the 4th. 2 to the 4th times 5 to the 3rd. If you did 2 to the 4th times 5 to the 3rd, you get 2,000. So we just got to break that down. What are the primes that are in there? And so let's first rewrite this as the natural log of 2 to the 4th times 5 to the 3rd. Now let's go back to the rules. The rules say that if things are multiplied, that we can split it up as a plus. So let's split it up. So that's 2 to the 4th plus the natural log of 5 to the 3rd. Okay. Now, for it to be finally written as natural log of 2 and natural log of 5, multiples are okay, but the power on it is not. So we're going to take the powers, drop them down in front, take the powers, drop them down in front for a final answer of 4 natural log of 2 plus 3 natural log of 5. Now, how could you check your work? Well, in a calculator, you could put the natural log of 2,000. You'll get a decimal. And then if you put this into a calculator, 4 natural log of 2 plus 3 natural log of 5, you should get the same decimal. So you should see that those things match. Now, the only difference between 1 and 7 and 9 and 15, 1 and 7, you're breaking it down to be 2s and 5s. For 9 through 15, break it down to those ones. Now I want to talk about expanding. So I would like to do 29 and 31 with you. Let's start with 29. Each one of these things inside the logarithm is multiplied together. We can use our rule of expanding by taking those and writing in their own unique logarithm with pluses between them. So this is going to be the log base 9 of 6 plus the log base 9 of x cubed plus the log base plus the log base 9 of z. Now that's just the first step of the experiment. Always, always see if anything contains a power that can be dropped down in front. Can be dropped down in front. Okay? And it will just hang out in the front and multiply. And so our final answer would be the log base 9 of 6 plus 3 times the log base 9 of x plus 5 times the log base 9 of y plus the log base 9 of z. And that's as far as you can go. You have expanded it using the three. Now, if any, the first thing we want to do is to express this as a power. Can anybody tell me what power can we rewrite that, that fifth root? How can it be rewritten as a power? Anybody know what they think it could be rewritten as? Anybody have an idea? How could we rewrite the fifth root as a power? Uh, is it the power to one to the fifth? You got it. Exactly right. So take this, put it in parentheses, and put it to a one-fifth power. Now that's our first step to just kind of do a little rewrite to get ready to deal with this. Now, every factor on top are positive factors. Every factor in the bottom are negative factors. They're going to subtract. So these are separate factors. The P and the Q are separated. Because they're multiplied together, they're factors. This is just one complete factor down in the bottom. Because of the pluses or minus there, that is its own factor. So how do we do that? Well, we do the log base 3 of each piece on top added together minus, and I'm going to kind of have to write it down here, but the log of the bottom factor. Now the only thing left we can look for is can we, do we see a power that can drop down in front? And so that's always our last step. So we have a square on our P, we have that one-fifth, that does say one-fifth, it doesn't look like one-fifth, one-fifth power 
uh, on the bottom, we can drop down. So our final answer would be 2 log base 3 of P plus the log base 3 of Q minus 1 fifth the log base 3 of 3Q three minus 1. Okay? Now, for 29 through 35, you are trying to rewrite it as large as you can, as expanded as you possibly can. For problems 39 and 40, we are actually going the opposite direction. We are trying to actually condense it down into one logarithm. So that's what we're going to do now for 39. So 39 is the opposite of what we just did. We're going to go backwards and put the logs back together. So think about the last is to put the powers back on. So let's put our powers back on as our first step. So this is going to be the log base 5 of x cubed minus the log base 5 of 6 minus x to the 1 half. Now a 1 half power is what type of radical? A 1 half power is what kind of radical? It's a square root, right? So this one-half power, let's rewrite as a square root. Now, anything that, po that is positive is going to be multiplied. Anything that is minus is going to be divided. So we need to divide by this to condense it to one last step. So our final answer for 39 is the log base 5 of x cubed divided by, because this is negative, the square root of 6 minus x. So that's how you condense back together. Now, back in lesson 3-2 last week, um, there were some things that I told you that you needed to do on a calculator. Um, and problem 49 and 50, we are going to use the change of base formula. Let me tell you what that formula is. If we have the log base B um, number, and the log base is not uh, a base on our calculator. Remember, there's only two buttons on the calculator that we can do. We can do a natural log or we can do a common log. So uh, the natural log is a base E, the common log is a base 10. Our calculators cannot do any other logarithms unless we use the following formula. So this formula is called the change of base formula. It's really important. Uh, basically, uh, if I want to enter this into my calculator, I can put the natural log of the number divided by the natural log of the base, and it is equivalent to what you see there. So if I want to put number 49 into a calculator, because I don't have a base 6 uh, calculator button, I do the natural log of 14 divided by the natural log of 6, and just put it right into a calculator, which is really great. So that is 49. Um, let's look at 61. Our base, this one they don't want us to use a calculator. They just want to kind of estimate what is whole. So let's think of powers of 4. 4 to the first is 4. 4 to the second is 16. Now let's think on a number line between 4 and 16. The number 5 is much, much closer to 4 to the first than 4 to the second. So that means that this is going to be to rounding to, to 4 to the first on it to it's going to be closer to 1 than to 2. Now, 
if you use the change of base formula from above, that would be the natural log of 5 divided by the natural log of 4. And it is only 1.16 to 1 that it is closer to 2. So that's kind of what. And then uh, I want you to go watch your Ed puzzle. So let's look at 76. Is that every single one of these is uh, has a 1 fourth there. So let's take and pull it out in front here. A one-fourth is like a radical, okay? So let's think about that. Now each one of these, let's pull that uh, inside. So we're going to ignore that one-fourth. I just didn't want to have to deal with fractions for a while. And so this is the natural log of x cubed plus the natural log of y to the 7th plus the natural log of z to the fifth. Okay. And now, um, since all of these are added, they can be condensed into one logarithm by multiplying them together. So this is 1 4, the natural log of x cubed times y to the seventh times z to the fifth. And we learned that anything that's a power, or anything that's in front, can come in as a power. And so this is really to the was the fourth root. Okay. Is 19 through 27. I'm sorry, I missed those. So let's just do a few of those real quick. Let's do some of the 19 through 27 ones. <laughs> I didn't see those ones. Okay, most extreme because we're going to use some of the rules that we just learned. So first off, let's do 19. A one fourth or a radical, a fourth radical down in front. Now look at this piece. This becomes very, very easy. What power do you put on a 5 to get 25? That's 2, right? So that's going to be 1 fourth times 2 or 2 fourths, or the final answer is 1 half. Makes things pretty good, right? Let's look at 21. The e power can drop down in front. So let's do that. When it drops down in front, it multiplies by whatever's there. 27. 4 times 5 is 20. Now, because of what we learned last lesson, 3 2, about natural logs, the natural log of e is 1. So this is just 27 times 1 and 20 times 1. They cancel out. That's perfect. So that's just 27 plus 20 or 47. We're going to do one more, 23, before we say goodbye. So I'm going to rewrite the 27 to a 1 half power. So I can take that 1 half power and drop it down front. Now that 1 half power is going to drop down in front and multiply by the 2 that is there. Two. So now it becomes much easier. What power do I put on a 3 to get the number 27? Nicer and a little quicker because do things in a way that we haven't been able to really before. Okay, so this is your 3-3 three, three homework. Again, all the chapter 3 homework is in the note packets. So you need to go do your 3-3 three, three ed puzzle. Make sure you uh, write those notes down. You'll get some bonus at the end of the chapter.